Hi everybody, Joe here from Shutter Speak Photography. Very nice to see your smiling face again here on YouTube. Thanks as always for leaving that webcam on. I appreciate it. Hey, you can see me. It's only fair that I can see you. Hey, so I want to talk to you today about a dedicated piece of software for focus stacking your images. The software is called Helicon. And in case you're not familiar with focus stacking, focus stacking is when you take a series of images and the focal point changes in each, each image. And at the end, you combine them together to get an incredibly sharp image that's sharp from front to back. No way you could uh, replicate this with a single image. So focus stacking is a really cool way of doing that. Um, we've talked about that a couple times and I have a video on how to do that on your Nikon Z camera. You can check that out if you haven't already. It is a process that you can automate or you can do it manually. It is available on your Nikon Z cameras. It's available on your Sony and Canon cameras and your Nikon DSLRs as well as on most other brands. Okay, it might be called something slightly different. Focus shift shooting is the term that Nikon uses. Focus stacking is a common term as well. So Helicon, what it does is, all it does is it takes your images and it stacks them together, merges them, and gives you the outputted image, which is the combination of the best and sharpest parts of every image that you took throughout your stack. And it does it better than Photoshop or any other software that I've tried so far. And, and so I wanted to show it to you. But most importantly, I wanted to give you a copy. So stick around. At the end of the video, you're going to have the opportunity to win the software. Behind me, you probably see we have a model of the USS Enterprise, and we're going to use that as our example. I'm going to use the automated method on my Nikon Z7 again doesn't matter what brand you have, but essentially what's going to happen is it's going to overshoot it. And I'm going to show you what happens when you overshoot and how to correct that. So we're actually going to, we're going to do it correctly in camera, but in the end, we're going to do it wrong in the software and I'll show you what happens. So, you know, when this happens to you, you're going to know exactly what went wrong and how to correct it. And then I'm going to show you what happens when we do it uh, correctly. But Hey, before we start all that, I just want to say thank you for being here. I appreciate you. And of course, if anything in this video helps you out, please help me out by hitting like, subscribe, and of course, ring the bell so you get notified of future updates on this channel. I appreciate it. It's something nice you can do for me. Um, and of course, best of all, it's free, right? So, all right. Now with that all out of the way, let's shoot some images of the Enterprise. And let's see what we got. We'll bring it into the software and we'll play around with it. Okay, so we are here on our Nikon Z7 camera. We have the Enterprise over here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up the camera. I'm on F8 right now, ISO is 500, and I'm at 1 30th of a second. Now, you know, obviously you're gonna set the settings to whatever's appropriate for your scenario, but that's what works for this setup here of our USS Enterprise model. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the focus point down to the lowest possible spot, and I'm gonna go into my menu, and I'm gonna go to focus shift shooting. I have it set at number of shots is 20. The focus width step is at its default. The interval until next shot is zero in case you needed a delay in between um, we're going to lock the exposure on the first frame. That's important. We want to do that. I want the peaking stack image on. That's just going to show me where the focus is, but it really has no other effect um, on the image. And that doesn't happen until after it's done. So on or off makes no difference. Silent photography, definitely off. And it can go into its own storage folder, which I do want, so that every time I do a stack of images, it's always in a new folder. So I don't have to go searching for all these different stacks or try and figure out where my starting image was. Okay, and then all I have to do is go up to start and hit start and the camera will prepare and then fire off 20 photos. If it doesn't need 20, it'll stop, but it does have to focus until it reaches infinity. And again, at F8, we should have pretty good depth of field, but you're gonna see, actually, we really don't. And coming up on the back of the camera now is the peaking stack image. So now let's take these images into Helicon. Well, first we'll bring them into to Lightroom and take a look at them. Then we'll bring them over to Helicon 
and we'll see how they look. Okay, so I've brought my images into Adobe Lightroom and you can see if we go through the stack here, we have way too many images. Now, the reason why we have way too, too many images is because the camera continues to take images until focus reaches infinity. We're not gonna reach infinity in this scenario because everything's just too close. Now, if you were outside taking a landscape, you would reach infinity pretty quickly. Generally, after about five photos or so, you would reach infinity in your focus point. That doesn't happen indoors. Uh, things are just too close. So this is what happens. We have a series of images and you can see the focus point moving to the back of the ship. And I think right about here now, the background becomes pretty sharp, right around, right around there. That's the background. And then we just continue to get blurrier and blurrier and blurrier and blurrier as the camera continues to take pictures, trying to get you that infinity point. So let me show you what would happen if we took all 20 of these images and just brought them into Helicon right now. So if we take all of them, we're just gonna select them all, say export, and let's see, here it is. And I'm gonna send it over as DNGs, digital negatives. And these are gonna open up in Helicon. It's actually Helicon 8, by the way, in case you're interested, 8.1.1 Pro. Okay, so we have all of the photos loading in. You see them on the right-hand side here. Okay, so really one of the nice things about this software is it is super easy to use. And in terms of the default settings that you see, like right now on my screen, I can pretty much just hit uh, render and this would work. There are three different methods of rendering but those are for very specific use cases and 99% of the time, you're just gonna use the default method B. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit render. I'm gonna show you what happens. So it's gonna go through all of these and it's going to basically depth map each one of these photos and create for us a uh, focused stacked image. Okay, so we have our final output of the image and it's not bad, right? Um, it really isn't all that bad. Let's take a closer examination of it. And you can see we have nice sharpness here. We got some sharpness here, up here. This looks great all the way to the back, but we do have some softness up here. And so why is that? Well, I'll tell you why. What happened was, the focus point started here and went up this way and cut across the image. So it never really got to this section of the image uh, to give us focus on that area of the image. So really for something like this, the best way for us to do it would be to manually focus the image. Now, let me show you another example. Okay, so our first round of results was okay, but I think we can do better with a little manual focusing. So this time around, let's do the focusing manually. So I'm gonna start up here and I'm going to, first I'm gonna take a picture of my hand. And that's only so I know where this focus stack starts since it's not being done automatically and it's not gonna go into its own folder. I wanna know where the stack starts. So I'm gonna take a look and see what we got. And I'm gonna start right down there at the bottom, I think. I'm using a little wider focus point, as you can see. I'm gonna move up a little bit. Get that, I'm gonna move into the front. Get that, now I'm gonna to move towards the back. You notice I'm not doing these in any, well, I'm kind of doing them in a particular order, but I'm not completely concerned with going in any very specific order because the Helicon software is going to take the sharpest points of this image um, regardless of what order I took them in. So let's now bring this group in and take a look at it. Okay, so we are here in Lightroom. You can see my hand there, so we know where that stack starts. So I'm gonna select the photo after that. I'm gonna scroll on down to the end here and I'm gonna export these as DNGs, digital negatives, right into um, Helicon Focus 8. 
and away they go and in a moment they're gonna open up and we're gonna see if we get a little bit better image and I think we're going to okay so we have our images loaded and now all I'm really gonna do again uh, method B depth map is the method that I want to use I'm just gonna hit render and let's let the software go through all of these images and see what it can produce for us all right so it is completed and you can see we have a much sharper image this time because we did take those pictures manually so if we take a look you can see we have nice sharpness here across the lettering the front edge and all the way to the back of our USS Enterprise we are nice and sharp so definitely doing it manually there was the way to go um, but of course you could have done it manually as well you're just not going to get in this scenario because the image goes from left to right we're not going to get as sharp an image as if the depth of field went from foreground to background like you would in a landscape I'm going to show you one more image uh, not something that we shot today but I just want to show you another problem that you could run into and that's kind of a, a haloing effect and I'm going to show you that in case you encounter it so you know how to fix it okay so here we have our colonial viper and I definitely overshot this now again just keep in mind that your camera is going to shoot into infinity and we really do have because of the way this image is and it's a smaller ship we do have depth of field all the way across and you can see we have depth of field here in the front um, there we go oops come back let's bring that up so you can take a better look at that okay so we have sharpness out on the outer edge I think we have sharpness even below that as well let's there we go all right so we have sharpness in here um, but keep in mind this image is going to go all the way to the back while it tries to grab focus on the background all the way out to infinity okay so let's merge these together and I'm going to show you what's going to happen so I'm going to select all of these I'm going to send them over to Helicon export as DNGs and then we'll let the software run its magic okay so here we are I'm going to now render this image and Helicon starts to analyze the depth map of each individual image picking out the best parts of every one and I'm going to show you shortly what the results are going to be okay and now here are the results and you can see we have some problems here so let's zoom in and take a look you see the edges are very soft and there's a little bit of like a halo that comes around this image so what exactly is happening here well let me show you in Lightroom okay so we have our first image we have our fourth image fifth image sixth image but as we go further down you see how we start to get a blur and what's happening now is the edges of the blur it's now bleeding into our focus stacked image and that's why we're seeing that dirty halo uh, around the focus stacked image let's just take the first six and take one through six I'm gonna export these over and let's see what happens when we just use these oops I gotta go to export as DNG and now let's give this a try okay so our images are here let's render them and let's see what the final output is okay so we are complete now let's take a look and you can see how sharp this image is now edge to edge we don't have any of those halos from the blurry images because essentially what we did was we just brought in too many images and once we took those blurry images out we ended up with a much sharper end result okay so here's our final image returned into Lightroom and you can see how sharp it really is uh, edge to edge so it did a great job definitely the manual focusing method was the way to go with this one okay but typically if you're doing a landscape or something similar you can do the automatic method as long as your focus is front to back but because this was left to right 
Again, we needed to just to really do this one manually. It was the only way we were going to do it. And again, you saw the example of overstacking. If we stack too many images where our subject becomes blurry, it's going to cause those halos around our images. So we certainly don't want that. Um, now, to the important stuff. Of course, thanks for watching. I appreciate you. If you want to win a copy of this software, it's the Pro License Helicon 8. It's currently 8.1 at the time of making this video. There's going to be a link in the video description down below. You can enter a bunch of different ways. And of course, the more actions you complete, the more points you're going to get and more entries and better your chance of winning. Thank you, YouTube. I appreciate you watching this. And as always, um, you know, like I said, couldn't do this without you. So thank you for being here. Hit like, subscribe, leave me a comment, of course, and let me know what your thoughts are on focus stacking. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye-bye, YouTube.